We've made huge improvements to security between Zabbix 5.0 and 6.0 LTS. Let's take a look at all of the new features together with the support engineer from Zabbix, Carlos Salinc. Welcome. Hello and welcome to Zabbix Summit. In this topic, we're going to talk about securing Zabbix 6.0 LTS. Uh, and yeah, first of all, why do you actually need security? Uh, you usually don't leave your car unlocked, you, you lock your apartment, so why should your Zabbix instance should be different? And uh, this is not those simple things as your car or home, but because there are industry standards and business needs implemented for securing your data. And this is all done only because you need to prevent your data breach. And uh, in Zabbix, we do this secure environment thing by implementing a lot of features. Uh, of course, the most important one is using encryption to protect the data. We use encryption on all of our components, so it's uh, well done. Another uh, feature we offer is role-based access. Basically, only people who are authorized to do something can access Zabbix, access data, and do something with it. Uh, furthermore, we use audit logging for visibility. Basically, everything which, uh, what is done on Zabbix, what has been changed, is available for users to see, for admins to see, and to uh, notice changes or, or if something has happened. And it's not yet here, but we are planning on implementing ISO standards, which will be a big step for Zabbix in the future. Uh, so, in more in-depth, how security works in Zabbix. Uh, there are a lot of components, and uh, on the screen you can see uh, basically all of them. So, first of all, you can encrypt all of Zabbix components, which is agents, which is proxies, connection to the database, as well as secure connection to the front end using HTTPS. Uh, we also offer role-based access, as I mentioned before, and all the user passwords are saved in bcrypt in database, so there's no plain text there. And a new feature in Zabbix is that we are using password policies, but I'm gonna talk about it a bit later. Uh, you can store secrets in HashiCorp Vault. It's an industry standard nowadays, so please use that. Uh, how we use the role-based access? Basically, we have three types of built-in users, which is Zabbix Super Admin, which can do everything, and uh, unlimited access. So, yeah, it's, it's the main, main guy in, the, in your industry, which works with Zabbix as a Super Admin. There are also Zabbix Admins, which basically can create hosts and templates, and this is permission-based access, which means that you can uh, retract some access or give some more access to Zabbix Admins according to your needs. And the default user is the Zabbix user, which can access monitoring and uh, you can grant various permissions to this user. Uh, now, you might use also API. And to do this, you need API tokens. And uh, how to actually achieve them? It's pretty simple. You issue a JSON script where you log into the Zabbix frontend and in return you receive yourself an API token. Uh, this is the old way. A new way is uh, to do it via front end. You go to conf administration, configuration, and then you access it via the API tokens tab. It's pretty simple. You create uh, your own token. You create a user which the token is for, the description, expiry date, and uh, if, uh, if it expires or not, it's, it's dependent on you. And uh, this is how the newly created token looks like. Basically, it's uh, a pretty simple description of what has been done. And you can easily copy the contents of the token to your clipboard and uh, use it. A uh, great feature of this is also that, that you can uh, actually see all the tokens which are issued from the front end on your, uh, on your screen. So you can see who has done it, when was the token last accessed, and uh, for which user it is created for, and if it's enabled or disabled. So it's a great feature to have. Uh, so how do you actually use API tokens? We generate them and then we just create JSON scripts. We choose what, whichever method we need. Uh, you can check them out. You can be item get, trigger get, uh, trigger create, or something like that. You can check out the API uh, description page in our documentation for methods. Then you use the params and combine them or whatever you want to do them. And uh, then the main thing is that you need the authentication token because without it, you cannot access data from the API. Uh, another great feature we have is the secret macros. Basically, uh, these are the values which are not visible for everyone, such as passwords, com SNMP communities, a lots of lots of uh, secure things. 
and uh, these are not cloned or exported with hosts or templates so you cannot uh, easily access them. Uh, one thing you need, need to take in mind that these values are still stored in the database which means that uh, database connection and access must be secure uh, because if it's not then they are still accessible easily. Uh, another great feature as I mentioned we are using HashiCorp Vault which is a industry standard tool for saving secrets and it works pretty pretty uh, easily from Zabbix. Basically you add the secrets to the vault and then Zabbix configuration cache access it every time it's updated. It depends on your settings but uh, usually it's like one or two minutes or whatever the settings for you and uh, this is how you can store the most important secrets. Another, uh, this uh, vault configuration is saved in the server configuration so it's uh, pretty easy to access. It's you enter your vault token, your vault uh, URL, which should be HTTPS, so secure, and you add the path to the database. So pretty simple configuration, you just put it on and use the vault. Uh, so finally, what's new in Zabbix 6.0 LTS? There are a few things. It's audit log, it's password complexity requirements, TLS SSL website monitoring, and there are some new user permissions for the service tree. Uh, audit log, well it's, it's better now. You can actually log a lot of, lot of things you couldn't before and uh, API operation logging is a lot lot better than it was beforehand. There are also some quality of life improvements that you can see while using this audit log and the good thing is also that now more uh, higher amount of devices and items are being logged. Uh, however, the new metrics which are being logged are script execution, global macro change, LLD changes and some more features are added. And uh, on the screen you can see uh, some metrics uh, of the new features such as macro addition, macro updating, script execution and uh, the good thing is you can see which values are changed into which values and uh, what are the script outputs. Uh, this is a great example because two of the scripts are failing with script errors and you can actually see the errors and only one ping script is actually working. So yeah, this is how the output looks like of, uh, of the scripts in audit log. Now a uh, really long time coming change is the password complexity because uh, unfortunately anymore you can't log in using password which is password. And uh, this is done by implementing password complexity, complexity and policy. Uh, and these password requirements are as follows. Basically the password must be eight characters long, it must not contain a name, last name or the username and it cannot be easy to guess. I trade ABCD1234 and ASDF1234 and these passwords do not work and uh, that is because these simple passwords are indexed against about one million common passwords so there are a lot of common passwords out there which Zabbix knows of and does not allow to use and the uh, good thing is that fresh installation passwords for admin users do not change. Uh, this is uh, how the requirements look like on the front end. Basically, uh, yeah, you press on the big question mark and you can see all these requirements. And as well, some error codes if you mistype the password or, or, or uh, enter incorrect password. In case of a simple password, there's a one error message and in case you're using username, name or last name, then it's a different one. Uh, my colleague Ayer has already talked about, a bit about Zabbix Agent 2 features and uh, this is also regarding security. Now you can actually monitor website certificates. You can, uh, and it's a template out of the box, so no configuration. Well, there is configuration needed, but it's pretty simple to set up. And uh, it displays information about the certificate website. Uh, this is a good example of a certificate. It's a certificate of Zabbix.com. And there's a lot of data incoming, but basically you're interested in probably the result value and the message uh, of, this, uh, of this result. So in this case it's valid and uh, the certificate is varied successfully. Uh, here is also an example of bad certificate. It's a self-signed certificate. Well, it, it's not bad in kind of theory. It's good if you're using it locally, but uh, not for commercial use. So uh, here the message differs, it's basically, yeah, certified success, uh, verified successfully, however it's self-signed. And uh, there are a few trigger examples of uh, how you can use this, basically the validation, if, if the certificate is valid, then, then it's fine, if not, then there's a problem. And uh, of course you can uh, calculate the 
certificate expiry by uh, by uh, uh, looking at the data, uh, what's happening after and uh, and uh, dividing it by some number. And uh, if it's uh, less than some days, in this case, it's seven days. So uh, yeah, a certificate expires in seven days, you get a problem. And another thing is that certificate fingerprint has changed, which means that uh, if you have a new certificate, this trigger will also fire and you will get notified about some changes. Uh, about the service trees, yeah, there are a lot of improvements in the service trees. I believe there is another presentation about more in-depth features of that, but uh, in this case, I'm going to talk about the user permission improvements. Basically, now you can give uh, modified access levels to the services. This is done via user groups, and you can add read-write or read-only access to these services, be because before it was only do everything or do, no do nothing. So this is a great addition to the service tree list and uh, you can use it to your advantage. Uh, this is how the permission view looks. Uh, you can see three child services and uh, this is done from a user which only has access to the third one. And uh, yeah, as you can see, you can only read the first two ones that they exist. You can see the data. However, you can only modify the third one. So this is uh, how it looks like in real life example. Uh, so, let's continue with the best practices about how to secure your Zabbix. Uh, starting from the left side, role-based access. You must uh, know, uh, distinguish your users, which users can access which features, which users are admins, what can admins do. You must set uh, this up so unauthorized users or uh, some users do not see what they don't need to see. Uh, furthermore, HTTPS, this is probably on the same security level as the securing connection to the database because if the data is sent encrypted from the server to the web interface then it can be well obtained by third parties or, or some bad people and uh, yeah same is for database and again store your secrets in vault it's a great feature to have and Zabbix has uh, out of the box integration with it so please do that as for agents, you can uh, use either, and proxies, you can use either PS key keys or certificates for the security of it. And in agents, in particular, there's a possibility to limit uh, uh, key execution. So you can limit scripts that can be executed on the agent server. Uh, yeah, same goes for proxy and the command line as well. And again, user passwords are encrypted by bcrypt, so they shouldn't be accessed and uh, the password policy is in place so user passwords are not easy to guess. So how to actually know if your Zabbix instance is really secure? Basically you can add, if you can answer these questions affirmatively then your instance is secured. So first of all, are you using encryption on all Zabbix components? If yes, good. If no, then please take a look at it. Secondly, are you using HTTPS to access frontend? Yes. If you are using it, then it's good. If not, then all your data can be intercepted. Uh, thirdly, about the agent. If you have agent 2 and you're monitoring some databases, you can actually use certificates to do that. And that's uh, uh, MySQL or Postgre database. That's definitely possible, even some more. Thirdly, uh, fourthly, sorry, is the connection to the database secure? If it is, then good. No problems there. And also, you need to think about the access to the database because uh, if the user passwords on the database are easy to guess, then it's a possible problem. Uh, same goes for agent key restrictions, so that uh, you cannot execute some, some well, important commands on the agent which you don't need to be executed. And uh, finally, more on the users. Are the user permissions configured correctly? Can users only see and do what they want and not something else? Maybe you have given super user privileges to some users who does not need that. That's, uh, that's, you need to check that out if that's fine for you. Uh, more about the macros. Are the most important macros made safe, uh, made secret? So users cannot see them. If not, then please do so. And furthermore, are they stored in Vault? Because if they are, then there shouldn't be any issues in the, with them being secure. And finally, are you using the newest minor release of Zabbix? Uh, at the time of the presentation, it's 4.0.35 or 5.0.17 or 5.4.7. Uh, 
why do that? Because if there are security issues, then they are addressed as soon as possible and this is usually done by minor releases. So please update your Zabbix to the newest minor release available. And uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about Zabbix security features and how to actually implement them, you can learn uh, that in the one day course, basically you can learn all the possibilities of security Zabbix offers. It's the role-based access, you can learn more about securing connection to the database to the front end, and of course using Key Vault. And uh, yeah, it's one day course, and if you're interested, please check it out. And uh, yeah, that's about it, thank you. Uh, thank you a lot, Carly, for uh, talking about not only new improvements, but generally speaking about how can we secure our environment. So a couple of questions in, in a similar vein. Uh, so first off, when we're encrypting Zabbix components, uh, how simple and if, is it possible at all to encrypt individual components separately? Let's say communication between the server and the database, between the server and agent, between server and proxy and so on. Yeah, definitely it's possible. You can encrypt uh, individual features as, as you wish. Basically, you can encrypt connection to the database with front end, between proxies, between agents as you wish. A great example would be that you probably don't need encryption on the agent which runs on the Zabbix server. And you also probably don't need encryption if the proxy is running on some kind of local network between this agent and these proxies, uh, and uh, between the proxy and those agents. So that, that's an example. Yeah, so, so extremely granular. You can yeah. uh, decide yourself what needs securing and how you can secure it also. Um, next up, so what if I wish to mix internal authentication with, let's say, LDAP? Is, is it possible to mix these approaches? Yeah, it's definitely possible. You can do that. You can use LDAP. You can use our own uh, built-in authentication. And now, uh, in the presentation, I already told about the improvements on the password policy. So now it's even safer than it was before. And, and I think it, it's not only possible, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's also recommended to always have an administrative user that uses internal logins in case your LDAP integration breaks yeah. or your LDAP service breaks. You're completely correct. Otherwise, yeah, you cannot log into Zabbix if, if the LDAP goes down. So please try to mix them both together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you a lot. Um, hopefully this will help our users to secure their environments, um, avoid security risks, and generally just strengthen their whole infrastructure. Yeah, thank you a lot. Thank you.